In the middle of Parashat Chayi Sarah, we're introduced to the beautiful and intricate story of Avraham Avinu's servant, Eliezer, as he embarks on a mission to find the perfect wife for Yitzchak. This story contains so many messages, messages that are found within the nuance and the subtlety of the psukim. It all begins when the servant arrives at the well in Haram Narayim, and he prays to HaKodesh Baruch Hu to find the perfect wife for Yitzchak, to find the woman who is filled with chesed, who offers Eliezer to drink, and also Vigam Gemalecha Eshgeh, and also to provide water for the camels. Immediately following that tefillah, Rivka appears. She fulfills the sign exactly, offering not only water for the servant, for all, but also for his camels. As the Torah recounts, Rivka's actions were marked by a sense of chesed. Shdi drink my master. And only after he finished drinking did she then say, Gam lig malecha eshav, I will also draw water for your camels. Later, however, when recounting the events to Rivka's family, Eliezer modifies her wording slightly. He says, She said, drink, and I'll also give your camels to drink. Here, Rivka's offer appears to be expressed in one seamless sentence, not waiting first to give Eliezer, and only after he finishes drinking to offer the camels, but offering it all at once. Why the difference? The tells the Rosh Hashiva of Mordechai Gifter in his Pirkei Torah sheds light on this, explaining that it reflects Rivka's extraordinary sensitivity to the distinction between human beings and animals. Rivka's initial wording separating her offer of water to the servant from her offer to the camels reveals her profound recognition of the inherent spiritual existential differences between humans and animals. A human drinks not just for physical sustenance, but to sustain a life devoted to Avodat Hashem. And therefore, that drinking is very different than when an animal drinks, which is necessary but lacks any deeper purpose. It's for this reason that Rivka separated these two acts. She couldn't speak of them in the very same breath. By contrast, Eliezer's servant, though praised by Chazal, as a righteous individual, didn't possess the same heightened sensitivity. Recounting the story, therefore, he expressed Rivka's kindness in a way that merged these two actions. This subtle difference highlights Rivka's exceptional spiritual refinement, her ability to perceive and articulate the sanctity of human life and its distinct purpose. Rivka's actions at the well teach us not only about the power of chesed, but also the importance of how we view and articulate the sanctity of humanity. Her awareness serves as a model for us to strive for a deeper understanding of the value of every action and its role in our service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu.